All right. Well, you know, it's regular as clockwork. The minute we start here, one of my cats wants to come into the room. <laughs> oh. Here she asks, you want to be part of Logic Live? Okay. Lovely. Hello. That will be, of course, until she doesn't want to be part of Logic Live. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Andy. Welcome to another exciting episode of Logic Live. Today, we're going to do Maya for Flame Artists with Yuri Tempolsky. Before we begin, just a couple of announcements. First, I want to thank Sinus Associana, who's our sponsor for, uh, for Logic Live. They're my uh, reseller. They've been my reseller for about 15 years. We couldn't do what we do without them. And they've always been a huge supporter of the Flame community. They uh, sponsor user groups all over. They uh, have always been contributors uh, and supporters of uh, One Frame of White and the other contests that we do. So I just want to thank Sinesis Oceana, Solutions, Integration, and Support for Digital Content Creators, Sinesis.io, supporting Flame Artists since 1997. Um, I want to thank everybody for all the great feedback that you've given uh, for these Logic Live episodes. Uh, I've got, uh, at the end of this, some new ones to announce for later in June. And next week should have a, a whole bunch more to announce for you. So I'm super excited about that. And um, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the cat, but the cat wants to get out. <laughs> can you wait till I finish my intro, please? No, apparently not. Well, hold on. We're going to have to edit this out later. Here we go. All right. We now know who runs the house here. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, paste into the chat um, a few links for everybody. Um, the first is, uh, you'll see it's a Dropbox link to uh, some of the, the content that Yuri is going to be showing today. So if anybody wants to follow along either now or uh, you know, later on, you'll be able to download the setups and some images. And then uh, I'm also going to paste in there the uh, registration links for the next three Logic Live sessions in case anybody wants to go ahead and sign up for those. So that's there in the chat. Please remember to use the Q&A for anybody who has Q&A uh, or has questions, and we'll try to get the answers going. And let's get into this. I'm happy to welcome to Logic Live, Yuri Tempolsky, coming to you live from Sao Paulo, Brazil. How's it going, Yuri? Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, what's up, Andy? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, man? Oh, um, well, I, as you said, I'm Sao Paulo, Brazil. I started working with Flame, I guess, eight years ago. I started actually with, with Smoke. So I came from motion graphics, then started learning Nuke. I, I hadn't known much about Smoke and Flame. And then I realized Nuke wasn't much in Brazil, so I thought about learning Flame and and smoke and here I am cool man and learn some Maya in between just did a, a really nice course and got me got me going awesome well thanks for doing this I really appreciate it why don't we jump right in if you want to go ahead and share your screen uh, I know you know okay uh, as we saw when uh, Christoph did uh, learning you know, nuke for flame artists um, you know but all of these apps are huge in terms of you know, when you, when you, uh, the, the deep, how deep you can dive, but uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I really think that Yuri is going to, uh, I'm from what I've already seen, you know, it does, does a great job at kind of demystifying the million gray buttons uh, that every VFX app has. So Yuri, why don't you take it away, man? Thanks a lot, Andy. Uh, okay. So first and first of all, let me show you guys this. As I told Andy, we're in uh, this social distancing stuff and things like that. So I felt uh, as I wasn't working, I felt the need to work some. I was missing flame and some CG stuff. And so I did this shot. I, it's probably gonna get a little laggy on Zoom. So I shot it with my iPhone and did some motion, some match moving with PF track and brought in some Maya and downloaded this Turbo Squid can. So, cause I don't like modeling. So, <laughs> and did some stuff around. So, of course I could then bring into flame by itself. And here I already, I already cleaned the 3D tracking I did. And well, for some reason, the shadow is not working. 
So this is one of the things that really bothered me when, uh, when we work with CG and Flame. Sometimes it gets some stuff that can be a bit more simple with ray tracing gets a bit annoying. But I probably would have got a pretty good result with this Triple Squid model and this BG and all. But the first thing that bothered me, and if we take a look at the ref, of the can is that in the can by itself you have uh, aluminum here aluminum down here and only this middle part is labeled and and tinted so uh, and with this turbo squid model that's not the case we have everything ever oh, I'm sorry Everything's tinted, so from bottom to top, mostly just this part is not tinted, so that bothered me a lot. Uh, I thought about getting rid of it with UVs, but with uh, Maya, that would be a bit more simple. So I'm going to show you guys a bit of Maya. So when we open Maya, this is how it turns out. This is, every, this is exactly how it opens. So this is the main viewport. It opens with the perspective viewport. So if you hold Alt and dolly and and click, you can dolly, you can orbit. Sorry. And if you hold Alt and right click, you can zoom in and zoom out. Alt and middle click, you can pan. Uh, this uh, just showing you guys a quick tour of the interface. And if you press space, you have the four up view. If you hover in whichever screen you want, so if whether it's the side, the front, the top, you can just press space again and you're there. It's an orthographic view, so you cannot orbit. You just can uh, pan and zoom. And this thing here is called the hotbox. So you have all the drop down menus from Maya. Maya uh, divides the drop down menus. There are so many that when you're in modeling, for instance, right here, you, you are rigging. When you go, you see from Windows forward, it changes everything. So I usually go in modeling. And if you want to go deeper, you can come in the hotbox and every, every drop down menu is here. This part is the outliner. This is like our media panel from Flame. It's, it works the same way. So everything you put in the scene will turn up here. This up here is the shelf, which is like our uh, FX nodes bin. So there's a lot of tools. Uh, they're not all in here in Maya. So once again, there are too many. You can also create one. So if you come here, create uh, polygons, all you have to do is Hold down Command Shift and you create and you put on new tools in your custom or even on existing shelves. Right click, delete. In here we have the main tools for dealing with stuff here. If and I and we usually use the shortcuts, so Q is just for selection. You can if you bring in more than one model here. Oh, and also A frames everything that's in the scene, and F frames just the object we're selected. Q again. I'm just so happy there's, there's two things that are the same keystrokes as flame. So there's two things I don't have to relearn. Okay, now you have the third one. H hides and hides, just like action. So there's a couple of <laughs> things that are similar. And F frames all. And then if you press the the key is uh, so Q selects W is the translate to it's right here, E is the rotation and R is the scale. I have no idea why R is scale and E is rotation. I think it would be better if it were a bit different, but who knows? <laughs> if you come into the channel box, which is Control A, or you can go into the tabs right here. Uh, you can also, this is like the axis properties. You can zero it out and put on one and we're back in square zero. Uh, 
Also here are for the viewport settings, instead of putting, pressing space bar, you can come in here. Uh, in here, uh, also here first. So new scene, this is like Word, right? So new scene, say open a scene, save scene, undo, redo. This is the snap to grid. It's pretty much the only thing I use up here. And the render buttons. Um, get out and what else what else okay and here's some things for the viewport viewing stuff like you can see it in wireframe so smoke shaded and here you can see with the shading like the textures you can preview it here you can select the camera lock the camera stuff like that let's dive in i'm gonna show you guys a little bit of that scene i did I'm gonna be use just one can just to be a bit more efficient. So let's go into file, import, and then we have uh, da, da, da. so right here I have the OBJ from TurboSquid. It's just a simple OBJ, and it's it's already huge so i'm going to the first things first space bar front and maya works better especially arnold works better with real life so real real world size so create and locate and let's do a measure a measurement measure tools distance to so now it's not to grid, so things get a bit easier. That's actually a really good tip. To yeah, sure your 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 dimensions are are accurate, you know, or at least close to to real world, especially, you know, with uh, something like Maya and Arnold that's trying to simulate the real world. You know, you exactly, sure exactly. Things that don't match if you're if the can is actually 30, 30 feet tall. You know? Exactly. Since uh, I remember when I was starting, we were learning Arnold, and people were talking about how it's uh, physically based render, and I was okay what that means. And I started to dive in, and I realized how the lighting changes once you work with real size. So. Uh, so the size of the can of a real life, real world can is 12 centimeters. Uh, Maya works custom, uh, a standard as centimeters, but you can come in windows, settings, preferences, and on uh, preferences, you can come in and settings. And right here you can change to millimeters, meter, inch, yada, yada. Since I'm in Brazil, I'm used to uh, centimeters, so. Oh, that's fine. No, let's go. Uh, it's totally uh, fine. We're, we're a little <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the can, the can that comes from TurboSquid is divided on this geo geometric this mesh. So we have the the main part, which I'm going to divide it, the, and those three tops here. Let's group them. So no, not not yet. Go back to here. So I selected them all, R for scale. Gladly, the axis in this case is already down, is already in the right position, but I'm going to show you guys how to change that. So let me put on W. So we have the, uh, the translate to. So if you want to change the, position of the axis you just press d and then you can oh nice d there you go there you have all everything changes a bit and you can change the axis position and the d again and you're back at your main tool so now we have 12 centimeters now let's delete the measure tools and back at it I'm just gonna change this part. So, uh, da -da. so I'm going to right click, nice, right click, and put on faces with the Q button, this selection tool here, and I'm going to select this part here down below. 
it selected more faces than I wanted. So if you press shift, you just deselect. Uh, with shift, it gives us this plus, so you can select more. If it's already selected, it's going to subtract the selection. Let me press W just to see if I'm right. Yes, I'm right. Let's turn off snap to grid. And then we go and edit mesh and extract. Now it gives us a lot of tools, a lot of settings, so I can already put an offset and all, but we don't need this here. So W and we're back at E2. And turn around and let's separate this other part here. So back at back in faces, Q again. And there we have it. Let's W. And okay, that's pretty good. Let's edit mesh again, extracted, W, and there you have it. And now we have uh, Maya for some reason. Uh, does a uh, grouping of everything. I don't need grouping of that. So to change things of uh, to uh, reorganize in the outliner, you have to hold command and bring in or else if you just, it would just do that. So command and then, and then this last one. And this group is not needed anymore. So let's delete it. I did another group. Okay. So now we have more pieces of the can. So it will makes make it easier for us to shade it. So let's go into hypershade. So Windows, rendering editors, hypershade. It's very overwhelming, Maya. There's so many tools and so many windows, but um, mostly uh, I found out that I don't use so much. So uh, those are two shaders that come along with the OBJ. Let's delete them. They, they're not needed. Uh, those three shaders, they're for the viewport. So they're, you cannot delete them. So again uh there's a, a nice tip here if you want to for instance bring in and do this kind of stuff in maya and just uh divide the mesh and stuff and you want for instance to start a shader and put on the all diffuse maps and specular maps and bump and whatever you can use a fong or a lambert for instance which are the shader the standard shader sh maya shaders and they will come to flame exactly as you made it. So even they, they even link the, the, all the maps. But since we're all in Maya and Arnold, I'm going to use a standard Maya, uh, standard shade, Maya Arnold shader. So uh, AI standard surface. Let's bring in two. I'll use Maya. Uh, Arnold can render the standard Maya shader, but it is more effective and has more tools and less limitations with AI standards. So let's, so the hypershade, I didn't talk about the hypershade. The hypershade has all this stuff, but uh, I usually just use this tab, the materials tab, and you can bring in here. This is a node based. Also, everything you do in here will come graphically. I don't use that much, but it's very handy. I won't get into deep because we don't have much time or else you're gonna fall asleep. <laughs> so this, uh, let me rename this. So label SHD with Maya, if you want with, it's better to rename stuff because it gets really tricky. So LM SHD, and now I'm going to apply this. So bring it a bit to the side. So. Sorry about that. Thank you. So let's get into our da, da, da. Sorry. There you go. So here I want the label. So right click on the material, assign material to selection, and all the rest. 
I'm going to put in the aluminum shader. And let's close the hyper shade. We don't need it for now. Let's group it all. So command G groups stuff. And here, da, da, da. so as you can see, I didn't name it. So now I'm messed up. Thank you. All you have to do to rename it is just to double click. Control A. So now I have the attribute editor and here we have we have all the tools that we have in the channel box. Like you can do the redo the scale and stuff like that. But usually the channel box is better because you can select more than one and change at once. Let's go back to the attribute editor. Oops. Attribute editor. So here are label shader. So with our label shader, I'm going to first thing, I'm going to come in this little checker bar, checker box here and come into file. Then we have already the image name, click on the folder and writing, sorry, is in Portuguese. This map is, I just took the map that comes with the 3D from Turbo Squid. So I just came into the to Photoshop and just change the color, change the logo and stuff like that. Of course, I didn't use that, I didn't need it. So uh, I used the, the base 3D model just to base 3D map to help me with scale and stuff like that. Source images. Okay, so we have it. And now we're already, we can see shaded because we're in this mode here, right in this globe with a checker box. Now let's bring in our PF track scene. Uh, so import. Yuri, this has been great, man, because so much of trying to pick up, you know, a new piece of software is to try to find the things that you already know how to do from the other pieces of software that you know. So even right. little things like, you know, why you use uh, the, the attribute editor versus the channel box and um, little things like what, what that checkerboard icon does, you know, like loading in a file. Right. All these little things are just so helpful. So thanks, man. No, no, no problem at all. Uh, sorry if I'm being too fast paced, but and if anybody has a question, just let me know. But yeah, I feel like the this is uh, we need to <laughs> connect with other stuff. So so let me no just so I imported as you guys saw it. So so it's now we have thing about PF training. <laughs> the mushrooms. Yeah, I love them. They, it has a lot of other stuff, but the mushroom is, is the best stuff for me. So, okay. Now I brought in the scene and as you guys saw it, so PF track does a really well job giving us everything already in place for Maya. Uh, so it gives us a scene node and everything here. So I come into, the panels here now on perspective, we have the camera. So if you click here in the film gate, you will have, and the resolution gate, you will have, yeah, that's perfect. You will have the, everything that will show up in the render. So we already don't need, we don't need the trackers. I already did the scene with the ground on the zero. So we will work pretty well. So let's delete the, the tracking markers and also the mushroom. We don't need them. And get the can, E for rotation, and W for translation. Let's put it a bit in the center. And now uh, just a quick, in the hyper shade, this is a bit annoying, <laughs> this is, for the PF track, it gives us the shading for the for the mushrooms, so it gives us a lot of shading. So, okay, 
my computer is not helping me. Great. Windows live, right? What to go wrong? That's right. <laughs> Oh, great, Maya. There you go. So, of course, I'm going to delete all that. Okay. This is really unwanted and it gets our scene a bit heavy. So, there we have it. Let's close it. And, okay, let's, oh, and now there's another cool stuff. So, in, the, in our label, if you select, then here on the attribute editor, it should, okay, come on, baby. Let's click on right click object mode. That's why. So now you have the label shader and let's do, this is one other cool stuff from, from our node standard surface. You can come in presets and put on, for instance, in this case, I did use the car paint. It works really well. And on the rest and on the aluminum shader, let's presets again, brush metal works really well. Now let's bring in our image based lighting. Uh, Arnold works well with standard uh, Maya lighting. So usually I use point lights and spotlights from here, but for image-based lighting, it's better to use the Arnold lighting and the area light is better for Arnold too. So let me bring in, uh, oh, first, sorry. On panels, let's, let's uh, actually, on the outliner, let's select our camera. And right here on view, you can come in and image plane and import image. And then on my shot reference, when I do image right shot. So 3118, there you go. Now it gives us this options, image plane shape right in the, out, in the attribute editor. Let me scroll back down, use image sequence. And as you guys can see now, it works really well. Oh, of course I forgot to talk about the timeline. Down here we have the auto key tool. And also, if you have the camera selected, you can come in Windows, rendering, uh, sorry, animation editors, graph editor. We have the good old fashioned curve. So if you're animating stuff and you just have to select it here and you can play with the curve. Okay, da da da. Now the lighting. Let's go back to our lighting. So area light. And it will give us this AI Sky Dome light shape in the attribute editor. So come in and color the checkerboard board again, file, and then let's get into file. So I did, so I was in an iPhone, right? So I didn't have much tools to do to create an HDR. So I did a panorama with my iPhone and gives me this JPEG, which actually worked better than I would expect it for the lighting. It's not perfect, but uh, it's pretty okay. So once again, let's select the Sky Dome light. Uh, once again, on the AI, AI Sky Dome light sh shape here, let's go into visibility and here on the camera, I'll put it on zero, just so it won't show the the on the render. So let's try our render over here. Let's, so in here we have the render settings in this one here. I won't go too deep in this. It's very. It's actually more intuitive than it looks. It's a bit scary from the get go. In here, you can set the AOVs. All you have to do is just click here and on here, and then you can delete. And here you have the system, some stuff I don't even know how to use it. The Arnold render, here are the sampling. This is to get more resolution and less grain. In this case, this shot was really okay in terms of, uh, I didn't have to change the sample shading, which got me really help happy and down here we have the so we set the right camera right in variables cameras usually comes with the perspective for standard 
And here are the presets for resolution. Let's leave it at 540 for now. Let's bring in our render view. And let's just do a really quick render. Just to see what we have so far. And so far, what is giving us? It's probably giving us the perspective. So render, nice, render, camera. So now we will render the right camera. You're, you're, you're uh, running this on a MacBook Pro right now, right? Yeah, I guess it won't work. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, was, I forgot to say. Sorry, bear with me, guys. This is a MacBook Pro, an uh, old MacBook Pro, actually. So, okay. So, well loved is what we like to say. <laughs> well loved. Actually, he's uh, quite a warrior. Uh, he helps me a lot. I can, I can complain about him. So let's go back. Already, I don't like the how the shading is from the preset. It's too reflective. This soda can uh, is from a brand, an organic brand in Brazil. I like it, and it's a very I don't know the I forgot the word in English. It's 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 not so reflective. So let's come oh, in man. to yes, exactly. So let's go right in specular here. I'm going to put a roughness of 0.3. And right on coat, where's the real reflection? Let's go in point three as well. Let's marquee what we want and do a render region. Come on, baby. It is really amazing how deep each one of these panels is. But uh, yes, you they're you start off simple, and then you can always you can always get more into it. Yes, exactly. There's so many, and there's uh, there's too many tools. There's uh, and and pretty much. But what I found out is if you if you go into modeling, if you go into rendering, you can uh, you can, or if you go into animation. So guys from animation do uh, stuff that. Uh, are really amazing and get into tools that I, I have no idea how to work. And the guys in, that really model, uh, they also do so much. But since we're just flame artists, just trying to get some some more tools to add for us. So uh, I found out that we can block more and just, we don't have to dive in so much into Maya and be more uh, generalists in terms of knowledge. And also I, dive, I dove in a little bit more into, in terms of lighting and, and rendering, which is what I felt I really needed. And just quick modeling to create really quick assets and to learn how to edit models that I, we can get in from TurboScript or whatever, or somebody can send us a model and stuff. So back at it. This is this is pretty better. It's just better the closer to what I wanted. But again, the oh, sorry. So the I the thing I didn't like since it's not an HDR, it's not that correct lighting. I have the lighting from the window that I wanted here, but this lighting is annoying me. So what I did was a quick pho photographic trick so let's go into panels perspective to get a little bit easier to to work and come into view no sorry so polymodeling create a plane and r for scale let's scale it a lot up e for rotation here and w and this is just for and let's go back into our camera. This is just, oh, sorry, wrong side. This is the side one. 
this is just for blocking the lighting. Since we're on uh, image-based lighting, we cannot do light linking. So if we were using different lights and we wanted to shade different parts of the this, we could go win in Windows relationship editors, then we would have the light linking, which is not visual as the action where we use a, a light link connection, but it's pretty straightforward. You just bring in, select your light and unselect the whatever you don't want here. So I get it. So now we don't want this to render out. So we don't want this plane to show up. So we come here right on the P plane shape, go in render stats and just go in primary visibility and it's hidden on our render. So once again. That's actually a great tip. I I, uh, I wonder if that if that works with IBL and Flame. Can you put something like a, a card to block something you don't want to see reflected or you don't want to use for lighting? Purposes? I actually have never tried that, but I'm thinking maybe if yes, I'm thinking yes. Maybe if we use the output to not show the the plane. Right. If I think it might work, I have not actually never tried. And it's a there you have to Gabriel Garrido too, who's in, who's, uh, who's on board. I know he he showed for uh, Logic Fest using uh, almost like painting um, uh, bounce cards onto your IBL. I guess you that's could do awesome. That you could make those areas black, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But I, I I think I can think that it would work. I but I have never tried. So as you can see, I forgot. Oh, sorry, I pressed that one. Hold on. If Chrome comes in, then we're we're screwed. <laughs> Please go away, Chrome. You're too heavy. <laughs> you love to eat memory. You can hear your computer crying all the way here in, in New York. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine that. <laughs> Please, Chrome, now. My does memory. The, does the render view here, does it keep like a, a, a stack of your previous renders? Like, yeah, you that's what I was. Last one? Yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. I forgot to do that prior. But if you, pre if you come here right on, uh, this is called the keep image. So you just come here and boom. And oh, it keeps okay, the prior image. Here you delete it and or not but <laughs> it gets there and you can do a second render so let's do one without the or blocking so again i'll just render a region Okay, that's good enough. So as you can see, we got a lot better. So I have a light over here. When I when I worked, I put also a spotlight in front. I won't get into that because we're already. Um, I'm thinking I'm overwhelming to already too much. So, but this is pretty much. And of course, I put on a plane as a as a floor, so we could so I could project shadow and reflexes and stuff and and then i divided with render layers before sending it to to render and go into flame so this is pretty much it uh if you guys have any questions about this is there anything about this specifically Andy? there's one question um about uh, preparing the textures um, do you need to do you need to prepare the textures in in linear color space like in Aces CG? 
you can i didn't you don't need to uh my i actually this is something i i'm i this is one thing i didn't delve dove into much in maya in terms of aces workflow so but i don't i didn't i use the srgb works really well with srgb as let me get into our video so please Okay, our label shader. So when you go into the texture, which is right here in color, just click here, and you can see uh, it's you can change here all the color spaces and works around here. But in this case, I just use the sRGB. Usually, what I put on raw, for instance, is bump maps. Bump maps I usually put on raw. So you have more information, but it also depends on how you prepare the textures for the on Photoshop or whatever you want to. Something else. So let me show you guys uh, just uh, something that might be re really handy for flame artists really quick. So I just started a new scene. So I'm coming here, I'm gonna bring a illustrator uh, and do a quick extrusion so you guys see it so you come in create adobe r illustrator object the first tip i could give is that the for some reason or at least the prior versions of maya i think 2017 the last i heard you couldn't work with uh with uh, Illustrator uh, AI from newer versions, so you have to save it as a as a Illustrator three or eight. I usually go three because I'm pretty sure it works. So this, and then I forgot something. That's a great tip, though, man. Thank you. No, no problem. So create. So you can. Uh, there's also this other stuff from Maya. Some tools have these a little box here, which are for giving us more <laughs> options to create stuff from in Maya. So this one from Illustrator, you can uh, start the bevel here. You can define how you want the bevel here and then create it and then of course add it later in the attribute editor. So let's go. There we have it. So right here on the bevel plus in the attribute editor, you can you can change the extrusion settings. But first, as you can see, it probably has something to do with the artwork uh, from Illustrator. It goes way far from it. So let's modify and center pivot. And now W. And before it was here, and I center it, and it was right here. Let me put in the right spot. I'm on front view again, snap to grid, just bring in. And perspective grid. And once you change this, of course, if you come into channel, you will see that everything is on a, uh, on a, every, uh, on a, a, it's not on zero. So, you can come in here and modify and freeze transformation. Now everything's zeroed out and it will be easier to work from now on. Let's go back to our attribute editor and let's put on more depth or more extrusion. And then as you can see in the attribute editor, as you do new extrusions and you bring in new stuff to the geometric you have, you this will just go far and the scene gets really heavy. So I'm happy with this extrusion. Now uh, let's just change a bit the beveling, or maybe more, just really ugly. And come here and edit, delete all by type and history. And now you cannot change the extrusion, but things get better. It's like, I can find a reference of something in flame like this. But you basically, you, you clean the undo and do stuff. Mm -hmm. but scene gets lighter so i guess that's it that's uh, oh one cool stuff i want to show about flame really quickly 
which is what I like about having the both tools at hand. So here's my my compositing batch, right? So I have the beauty here. And for some reason, my crypto mat was, I won't do an F4 here. Uh, my crypto mat wasn't working really well. Let's see if I can show, yes, it does. That reason is because you're doing a live demo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, my first I have no idea why my crypto mat didn't work and uh it just showed up like this. Every crypto object and crypto stuff I tried several kinds of renders and crypto wasn't working. So I of course I did some mat some mats from Maya and then I realized okay I can go I can if I need more mats and I don't want more time of rendering so I come into an action and I bring in the scene with the camera and all. And then we have the mats. And then with selective and stuff, you can do the matting right on a 3D with a 3D object. So nothing too fancy, but I felt like this could be on other stuff. And also after I did the render and I got, and this is the part of doing your own stuff. You're never happy. I'm never happy. Um, so I thought about, I need more to leave, get the can more wet. So, but I thought, okay, I won't render this again. It took me a long time to render everything. So I brought in, uh, Again, the OBJ with the cam, the FBX with the camera, and start, started playing with some diffuse stuff to create a, a specular map. And I haven't finished this because I started working, so this will go later. But it's one other thing that having both tools and having Maya to set up and clean everything and bring into Flame as an FBX. Of course, with the new versions, you can use the new workflow with sense of Maya and sense of flame and play even more. I couldn't show this because I'm on a flame night 2019. My MacBook doesn't work with 2020. And also my Maya is all set up with 2019 with Arno. Then I felt like it would be too annoying to change versions. So this is pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, sorry if I went too fast. I wanted to show as much as possible and without giving you guys. Uh, oh, no, it's great, man. Again, without you know, being like boring. everyone can see, there's, a, there's 10 million options in Maya. You know, it would be impossible to get through all of them. But uh, this was great. This I already answered the first 10, like, chat, like, uh, uh, problems that I was having when I first opened up Maya and was just like, how do I get it? Yeah. So I thought it was <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's too overwhelming. When you first open Maya, it's like, it's way overwhelming. I remember the first time and that's why I think it was, and it helped me learn Maya to understand, to better understand 3D. So even uh, as a flame artist, it helped me to do better with 3D inside flame or even nuke. So It's great. Does uh does anybody have any questions for Yuri? <laughs> that is a good sign, man. <laughs> Hopefully, <job>. yes. <laughs> or not, no. <laughs> or people I haven't seen. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, awesome. That was great. So hope that was a good good demo hope uh it helped to understand a little better and once again thanks for the opportunity you're giving everyone everyone at with this events uh, andy this is just amazing man and thanks oh, for the thank opportunity you. of being here um, and sharing um, stuff obrigado meu amigo <laughs> de nada <laughs> how do you imagine manage render passes with flame can I show that, Andy, do you think? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, uh, sorry, Gushahan. I hope I... Uh, so, here in render settings, uh, we have... Uh, stop doing that. We have the AOVs. So, uh, uh, the, most of the 
the main AOVs, so for instance, albedo, coat, and a lot of them, diffuse and speckler, emission, opacity, blah, 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 blah. You can set it up right here. It will give us the, the, all the AOVs here. And Maya will do the separation for us on the 16-bit EXR also. In here, you can say you can go on a half precision. If you click on half precision, it will give us a 16-bit instead of a 32-bit, which can get really ugly. We all know that, how it goes. But also, for instance, in this scene, I won't open the scene because my, my computer, I'm, I'm afraid my computer crashes. But if then we can come in this, this little icon here is for the render layers. In render layers, you can, for instance, so let me bring in here, uh, so we already have, or logic sign, let's bring it up. So for instance, you don't, you want to separate the one object from another in the render. So you can come here and create uh, render layer. So for instance, I want just the sign the logic render render layer. So, and, uh, you can put on the preview and if you come here and create collection and then logic G and then just bring in the poly surface here. Sorry, wrong place. You gotta drag in this place. You drag it in here. Can you help me or not? Command, right? Command and drag and boom, there you are. And you have your render layer. And then let's create another render layer for the floor. Create a collection, floor, geo. And then bring in our polyplane. And there you have it. Now let's see this render layer. And then we have only the floor. So this is very helpful for, for setting up like, in this case, I did this with, uh, oops, hey, fine. You don't want to work, yeah. So I separated the reflexes, the shadows, and also the ambient occlusion. So I did, several different layers and also to create separate mats. So for instance, really quickly, you want not only to get the logic layer, you want a mat for it. So you create a new layer, logic mat. Again, create a collection, logic geo again, bring in the poly surface. And then you can create a shader. You can come here, right click and create a shader override. Uh, let's call Matt. Oh, sorry. So then you come here on this little checker box and you have all these tools for Maya. So let's get a surface shader. And with a surface shader, we'll create a, a simple Mat for us, and it will override the any kind of shader we put in the, the geo in the mesh, but you still have it in the other layers. You, this is how you do it. Uh, uh, also, on an EOV, uh, ambient occlusion. If you do an ambient occlusion, it will be pretty much the same. It would come here. Once again, okay, come. let's create a new one. Let's delete this one. Okay. Create a shader override and come in the checkerboard and come in. AI ambient occlusion. And now we have, this is a layer for 
ambient occlusion. Hope that uh, hope that helped. Well, that's great. Thanks, man. Does anybody else have any other questions? All right. Well, thank you, Yuri. I really appreciate it. Um, no problem, man. This was fantastic. Let me share my screen here. And of course. Take us home. Thank you once again, Andy. This was awesome. Hope everybody liked. Oh, of course, man. Wonderful job. Thank you. All right. Let me just let you all know about some future Logic Live events next weekend. Next Sunday, I think. Let's try. There we go. We are going to do uh, Connect and Conform for Social Deliverables with Brian Bailey from Dallas, Texas. Uh, I've been working on my first uh, Connect and Conform project over the last week or so, and it has absolutely changed my life. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. June 7th, we're going to do Silhouette Paint with our friends at Boris FX. June 14th, Resolve for Flame Artists with David Johns. And then on June 21st, this is a, a new one. We're going to do advanced flame techniques with Mikhan Stepanian. And then on June 28th, no description at all, just Joel Osis. <laughs> if anybody knows Joel has ever seen him prevent or seen him present, rather, anything is possible. Uh, and so uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I want to thank both of them for coming on board with Logic Live. Uh, be sure to check out logic.tv for all of past Logic uh, Live episodes and a bunch of other great content. Please uh, take a second and go to the uh, Logic Live YouTube and subscribe. We want to try to get the subscribers up there. And of course, thank you again to our sponsor, Synesis Oceana, solutions, integration, and support for digital content creators. Be sure to check them out at synesis.io, Synesis Oceana, supporting flame artists since 1997. That's going to do it for this week's Logic Live. I want to thank everybody again. Thank you, Yuri. And stay safe out there, everyone. And we will see you all next week.